Hello and welcome to the big picture. Corruption and various methods to check this menace has been under discussion in this country for some time now. This has resulted in many laws being proposed and even enacted. One such law which has been the main handle to tackle corruption in government has been the Prevention of Corruption Act. Many amendments have been proposed to this law by the government. The Parliamentary Standing Committee on Law and Justice which went through the proposed amendments has come out with its report yesterday and has made several key recommendations. One of it is to treat bribe givers on par with bribe takers and to punish them on par. There are other important recommendations concerning corporate and commercial entities and the liability to be fixed on the employer and head of the corporates also in cases of bribe giving. We will discuss some of these recommendations of the standing committee and how it would affect the common people, especially those who are coerced to pay bribes. To discuss this, I have with me Shantaram Nayak, Congress MP in the Raj Sabha and also the Chairman of the Standing Committee on Law and Justice, Tarun Vijay, BJP MP in the Raj Sabha, Vikas Singh, former Additional Solicitor General of India, and Venkatesh Nayak, RTI activist and coordinator, coordinator at the Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative Program. Welcome to all of you. Mr. Nayak, I would like to come to you first. See, yeah. th uh, I'm talking of Shantaram Nayak. Yeah. Uh, there are two Nayaks here. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mr. Shantaram Nayak, uh, the, your recommendation, your committee's recommendation about bribe givers, the, the other, I was going through other, other recommendations, which are more or less, I think there won't be too many uh, objections to it. Uh, but as far as making bribe giver, uh, you know, uh, uh, br making bribe giving an offense and treating him on par with bribe, bribe taker. Isn't this something which is, which, which will have to be thought through before we enact something like this? See, question is, question is that a person who gives the bribe should be brought and regulated so that he reports if somebody demands a bribe he reports appropriate authorities, look here, so-and-so officer and so-and-so person he is asking from me a bribe for to do a work. Right. And therefore, the investigation machinery, police machinery can lay a trap with the assistance of this person so that objective is achieved. If somebody goes out and out and voluntarily pays money, then it becomes an offense, it should be constituted as an offense. Okay. That's why ah. the bribe giver has been brought into this fold. Outwardly it appears, why should a bribe giver basically be treated as a person who has also committed an offense is a question. Bribe there, are giver, some, Mr. there are some shades of it. Mr. Nayak, are, uh, Mr. Nayak, I'm sure you're aware that bribe giving in this, uh, you know, in, in most of the cases, we are talking uh, involving ordinary common people on the street is something which no common man would is, is doing it out of free will. It is in most of the times he is a victim. So, you know, here it can be seen as if a victim is being punished for something which he is not responsible for. No, but the question is, if we treat everything in this same manner, then there will be no end to bribery. If we regulate this, if we try to assist a person who has, who has been sought to be made a victim, then there can be real justice. I can understand. We were doing our discussion in the, in the, in the parliamentary committees. A thought came and that is rightful. Supposing, I am just saying, please give me a minute. Yeah. At a, at a operation theater, let us take an example for which I don't have a still answer. Right. At an operation theater, doctor demands money to do an operation. Which happens very Extra often. In money. Yes. In such matters, there are genuine cases for which I can really say that there are no answers. But these are the rare exceptions which happen. Otherwise, the bribe givers have to be brought into fold and it has been brought into fold. Mr. Mr. Tarun Vijay, how do you look at this? Do you think that these recommendations of the standing committee are something which can be taken forward to? Are it, uh, is it practical? Do you think that the common man uh, would, 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 would be benefited from something like this? 
I must congratulate Mr. Naik for this because this is a very bold and out of the box uh, uh, blazing a new trail. Right. Uh, I have been to many such uh, 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 very difficult situations like when uh, I was editor of Panchijane. Right. There was a plague in Surat. We were going from Mathura to uh, Surat by uh, this August Kranti Express. Right. We bought a ticket from Mathura, uh, boarded the train. The entire train was empty. Not a single person, not a single passenger was there in the train except me and our photographer Mukesh Agrawal. So the TD came and we showed him the ticket that we have bought a ticket from Mathura and please uh, uh, have it extended to uh, Surat. He said that uh, you will have to pay uh, some uh, extra charges, you have to pay this and that. But if you want some fayda, and I still remember his words, Saab, aapko kaida chahiye ya fayda chahiye? Yeah. Whether you would like to follow the procedure or profit. Right. So we were stunned. I said that, look, the entire train is empty. Not a single person is there out of fear that there is a plague in Surat. But uh, we are, we are uh, a legitimate passenger. This is the ticket. And you only have to extend it up to Surat. Right. So ultimately we paid him three times. But we took the receipt. We were adamant that we will have a proper official receipt. We don't care for FIDA, but we will follow the procedure. Right. Most, in most of the cases in India, what is happening that in government offices, in Babus and other officers and the police person, they charge a little less than what you would have given uh, if you had followed the procedure. Right. So everyone thinks that if I am having some kind of a profit, some FIDA, so why should I care for Qaeda? So Mr. you think Naik has yes. given a warning that so you if you are a bribe giver, you are also a facilitator in a wrongdoing. So you think you, you think that this is something which the, this is something which has to be which should be brought into the into the act and you know which which is something which will benefit. Okay, and let me get prove sometimes very complicated. Yes, but let us welcome it. You should okay. You welcome it. That's uh, Mr. Vikas Singh. Mr. Vikas Singh. The, the, no, the, we are we are hearing advertisements on radio and of the Delhi Chief Minister telling people that you know go and sting the bribe taker, bribe takers, you know set them up and things like that. Now in in, in an atmosphere like this, this this uh, uh, recommendation of the standing committee, you think they both gel or you think? You know, if I have, if if I go by what the Delhi Chief Minister says, I go and set up this bribe taker. I I ca you know catch him red-handed and then report him. You think you, you think these are all things which can which can reduce corruption in this country? Well, according to me, you know, the, today one has to realize that law has to evolve with times. Right. And today, governing is such a complex issue. That merely bringing in a law by this, you know, will not really serve much purpose. Right. Bribery has to be looked at from two different angles. One right. is the bribery, you know, for getting somebody who do, does the duty which he is supposed to do. Right. Bribery for doing that. Right. And bribery for doing something violating duty. For instance, a person want, does not want to pay tax. If he is supposing bribery to pay one crore, he says, no, no, I'll pay only 10 lakhs. I'll pay a bribe for this. So violation of duty bribe. Now the two have to be looked at completely differently and if the society, if the law doesn't evolve properly, then we will be running helter skelter, we will actually be punishing the innocent man who is forced to pay bribe exactly. for getting something very routine done. For instance, his pension payment, the old pensioner, if he goes to the pension office for his pension and if he has to pay bribe, the poor fellow, what does he do? He has to pay a part of that money, he says, alright, kuch to kam se kam ghar aara, I am getting something out of it. So to so even this Kejriwal, you know this the the, the this, this no this, this just let me complete this yeah. even this Kejriwal of of you know uh, stinging the bribe taker. Now even if you look at it uh, from a citizen's perspective, he by merely putting the bribe taker you know into the docks, his work still is not done exactly. unless you put in mechanism a place exactly. where if I make a complaint, then my case will be dealt it with speed with a separate team and they will you know process my complaint separately and expeditiously. Absolutely. Because my ultimately as a citizen, I don't have the wherewithal to keep running around these offices and just you know stinging people and putting them behind bars. Right. Ultimately, if my work still gets stuck up, yes, and ultimately the next officer also if he doesn't do my work, 
I am at the same position. That is so it. That's exactly that. We have to that. actually have a very pragmatic approach. I, unfortunately, our our lawmakers don't do that their homework well. A lot, lot of these countries in the world have now evolved to the system of you know d d discharge of duty bribe and bribe for doing something out of the duty. Right. And you know, in the discharge of duty bribe, it is either very mild or there is no punishment. It is only the bribe seeker who gets the punishment and the bribe giver doesn't get punishment. Whereas in the uh, uh, violation of duty bribe, then of course both will be. If I am wanting a big contract, I am not eligible for it. I am the fourth lowest. I want to non-suit the lowest and I, all I pay, I pay a certain amount of bribe and get into that contract, then I definitely need to be dealt with as severely as the bribe taker. Right. But in other cases, if we start putting people behind bars, then ultimately the law will result in, you know, the common man being more harassed Absolutely. than getting any uh, justice from the justice delivery system. Absolutely. So this, this you know, evolution in law has to take place and, and the lawmakers have to be con very conscious of uh, this very su subtle distinction okay. of, of what kind of bribes, you know, where the bribe giver needs to be um, okay. you know, sort of prosecuted. Okay, I think you have made some very important points. I'll, I'll, I'll take it back to the two to the two lawmakers who are there on our panel. But before that, let me get uh, Venkatesh Nayak in, in on this. Venkatesh Nayak, you think that this is something which will which will be helpful? The you know the, the standing committee report also talks about two. What Mr. Vikas Singh was talking about: uh, coercive bribe bribing. And you know, consensual bribing, collusive They're bribing, yeah, collusive or consensual yes. bribing. These are two yes. two separate things. Yes. The problem we are talking about, the biggest problem for ordinary people is this coercion bribing. So you think that by by making them also equally responsible, Mr. Mr. Nay Shantaram Nayak says that people should go and help the authorities by by reporting these kind of bribe givers. How by you know bribe uh, takers? How practical is that? There are two dimensions to this whole issue and which uh, needs to be pointed out. It's been suggested that the idea of making bribe givers also culpable for punishment under the criminal law is an out of box idea. I would respectfully disagree with that. India is a signatory to the United Nations Convention Against Corruption. Right. We ratified this convention in the year 2011. Right. And under that convention, bribe giving is recognized as an offence. Right. So it is a compulsion for India to be compliant with the provisions of the UNCAC that the law has to be amended and this has been brought in. Right. That is the first dimension. Right. The second dimension, Yes. I completely agree with the previous speaker who made a differentiation between collusive and coercive bribing. The way the language of this uh, bill is structured, that creates problems because it does not take into account realities at the ground level. First of all, we know, because we work at the grassroots level, that people who actually pay speed money or grease money to a public authority for getting a service or an entitlement think it is legitimate that this is what the rules require and therefore we have to pay this money to get a ration card. Forget villages, let us just talk about Delhi. Absolutely. On your own television channel, a few months ago, I appeared in a program regarding Aadhaar and there was a whole audience sitting here and the audience was telling us, the members of the audience were telling us that the enrollment of Aadhaar requires a form to be filled up and the forms are available only at the price of 200 rupees. Whereas the Aadhaar representative was at pains to say that this is not required at all. So the whole point is this, how do we tell people what their entitlements are which they can get without actually paying a bribe. So when you do not make that effort and people continue to think that they are doing something very legitimate and then you throw them in jail or put them uh, you know, in before a court, that I think is a travesty of justice. There are other serious problems also because I think this, get, this also contravenes Article 14 with, of our constitution which guarantees equal protection before the law but that's an issue that I would like to take up later on in the show. Yes. Right now I think there are these issues that needs to be taken up seriously. Of course, bribe giving is unethical but do you want to make it a punishable offence at the same level for all acts of bribery where somebody is forced to give or where somebody simply gives <laughs> the money to get the job done, this is a seriously uh, Mr. Uh, debated issue. Mr. Shantaram Nayak, this is yeah. the problem. 
you know, when uh, differentiating, if you don't differentiate between coercive bribing and consensual bribing, then there could there could be serious problems where, like what Mr. Vikas Singh was talking about, a pensioner, or uh, what Venkatesh Nayak is talking about, you know, somebody trying to get a ration card, or a, you know, how do you how do you differentiate between them? If you don't, and if you don't differentiate, don't you see that you know you you will be we will be ending up sending sending very uh, innocent Can people to, on it, to jail. Uh, yeah. If we make all coercive bribing, if we exempt them, yes, then we will not be leading to anywhere. We have to differentiate between coercive in sense. Supposing a person has got a scope to report, has got a scope to report. Mr. Na Mr. Nayak, I would like to this sorry, Mr. Nayak, I would like to intervene here. You are talking of scope to report. There is scope to report always. There is no. I mean, every person who is who is who who becomes a victim of the, in this kind of situation. Whenever I go to some office and they demand bribe from me, I have this option of reporting. But as Mr. Vikas Singh rightly points out, that you know, if we if if I report this before I, I, I in your in your in your report, it's very interesting. You 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 make to a difference uh, difference between. People who report before giving the bribe and people who report after giving the bribe. Well, if I report before giving the bribe, how am I ensured that the work for which I have gone there will get done quickly? Because the usual experience of people in this country is the moment they reported, their work doesn't get done. How do we so ensure we that? We take a negative approach in every matter. We will know leading to anywhere. Just like see, in this is a negative matter, approach. In other card matter, yes. uh, Mr. Nike said <laughs> yes. that uh, somebody was asked to pay 200 rupees, which was actually not entitled. In people such people matters, think that they are supposed to pay 200 rupees. Uh, in such matters, obviously, any common man knows that such forms do not require money to be paid. No, many in, common in, men don't know. No, no, no. We are don't know. So yeah, in, this is a case which falls in the area of where we have to. Educate literate people. Now in transport department also, they ask for ten rupees or fifteen rupees for a form officially. Yes. That we can well understand. Unless a prescribed form is purchased from the counter on payment of rupees ten on a receipt, Mr. that is acceptable. Mr. Now, in this case of 200 rupees, obviously, Mr. Nayak, Mr. Mr. Nayak, let us not get into this. 200 rupees, I am talking of the larger issue. How does how does my work get done if I honestly report so how, how to, to the authority you, that you know somebody was seeking by from one, Why should one presume that just because you have reported the matter, that, that my work, work will not be done at all? Okay, I mean that if that is the that's your approach. Let me get the Tarun Vijay, Mr. Tarun Vijay. You think that you know this is the this is the biggest problem. I'm sure you also, before you became an MP, or even me, I don't know whether you still face those problems. But before you became an MP, you must have gone through these kind of things. How do we, how do we ensure that the work gets done if I, if if I am honest enough to report this this kind of matters? It's a very serious issue, and you are right. But before that, I would like to stress that I don't agree that any bribe is a happy, uh, happily given bribe. Or no, consensual no, bribe. No. Obviously. Every single bribe is an act as a result no, of coercion. Of whether it's a Diwali gift, whether it's a New Year gift, whether Absolutely. it's a bribe being given to facilitate some kind of no, a thing no, done. No. no person, even the bribe taker, would ever like to give a bribe happily if he can get his work done without giving a bribe. Right. So that is one thing. So there should not be any kind of a, this hypocrisy that this kind of a bribe is a consensual bribe and the bribe giver is very happy giving it and the bribe, uh, the, the other kind of a bribe can be coercive bribe. Every bribe is a coercive bribe. Every bribe is a bad wrongdoing, number one. Number two, it's very right that in offices where you don't give bribe, it's very difficult to get things done. I have been experiencing it even after I became member of parliament in Uttarakhand. Things, sing, and in Delhi, in railway compartments where we go, <coughs> there are a hundred such uh, avenues where the bribe giving is a normal practice. And if you don't give a bribe, they will look at you, where from have you come? Yes. You don't know <laughs> what is the norm, what is the ritual here. Right. So the first thing that Mr. Naik also should suggest that there should be a proper redressal, a corrective measures, 
a center where a person can just give a call and get his work done without being facing the going to the offices and all those cumbersome i will give you one example though it is not very um, uh, directly connected there was a demonstration today that two people who called police by uh, dialing 100 to help <coughs> the uh, that unfortunate student nido uh, tania they are also you know <coughs> um, uh, arrested by the police right. now here is a problem if the khaki people act in this kind of a way, who will trust them? We will they not. are the people with whom, uh, to whom uh, a person, a common person would go for getting corrections done. Yes. And he himself indulges in the wrongdoing. Then where is the answer? The where bribe the answer? giver will right. always be under pressure okay. that he has to get things done. Right. But Mr. Vikas Singh, I would like to come. No, there's... There, People who are who are who are involved in this kind of campaigns and people they say that you know providing one should be you know, the bribe giver has to be provided some legal immunity if you have to fight corruption and if you want corruption to end and if you want people to report about this yeah, bribe unless yeah, until there, are, there is yeah, legal yeah, immunity. Yes, Mr. Nayak. Yeah, I would just like to say, Mr. Vijay will my good friend will agree with me that we have got in Parliament. A bill pending. I, I I won't say that every law is a solution, but this bill is very precious. You are talking it the whistleblower bill. It gives citizens a right Grievances. for any service. Every service will be, if the bill becomes a law, will be given rendered within stipulated time. Right. Maybe ration card, caste certificate, income certificate, whatever it is. And if the officer in charge fails to do it. Fine up to 50,000 can be imposed right. upon that person. Okay. And in a serious matter, he can be suspended. Okay. And uh, this is a very major step government of India has taken. Right. Provided it becomes a law. Okay, Mr. Mr. Vikas saying two things. One is about one is about providing legal immunity to the to the to the to the bribe giver. If this something which should be which should be uh, you know, weaved into the Prevention of Corrupt, Corruption Act and also we are talking of a whistleblower's bill which, which should take care of some of these things or, or you think the whistleblower will, bill will take care of it? No, no, the whistleblower bill can't take care of it. But before I respond to this question, I am really amazed how a member of parliament is making a statement that there is no compulsory, every bribe is by compulsion and there is no <laughs> voluntary, I mean, if you don't even understand the basic concept of bribe, yes. then what kind of law are you going to do? You are a member of parliament. Now, if you are, supposing if you are uh, caught uh, um, committing an offence, you don't have committed a murder. like this. You I want the speaking police here to as a manageable you. person. What and, kind and, of No, no, please, to please. Is this the please, way you talk please, on the table screen? Please what let kind me of speak. A member of parliament, Please you have let no me right speak. To, let, you, no, no, you are yes, standing I'm amazed, wrong. I am amazed how what you have become a member you of are? parliament. Mr. Mr. Vijay, I'm Mr. Vijay, I'm Vijay, I'm sure that what kind of listen to what I'm saying. You are using. Mr. Vijay, Is Mr. Vijay, I'll come back to you. Mr. Vijay, let me let me let me. What I'm saying, then you'll understand. Yes, Mr. Vikas Singh, understand what. Mr. Vikas Singh, point out. Mr. Vikas Singh, please. You are speaking so arrogantly. No, no, Mr. Vikas Singh. You think you are the reservoir of all knowledge? Vijay, 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 please, please let me let me handle this. Listen to me, Vijay. Please let me handle this. What foolish statement you are making, Mr. Vikas Singh? Please, if you just listen to me, you will understand. What kind of a person you are, Mr. Vikas Singh? Uh, Mr. Vikas Singh, please. How can you use this kind of a language, Mr. Vikas Singh? Please. You have no civil sense. May, Vijay, no, please. No, 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 like if you joker. hear me, if you Vijay, hear Vijay, me, you will please. understand what I am saying. Vijay, please. <laughs> no, please, no. Okay, I am yes. amazed that we have parliamentarians like this. Okay, we, now Vika, you tell me if Vika, there is Mr. Vika a Singh, tax assessment. No, no, Mr. Vikas Singh, one no, second. No, just listen to me. This no, no, is I'll, important. This li is just listen subject, to me for a minute. Please use your, please use, please take care of your language when you are speaking. That's all. Please continue now. Okay. Now, supposing there is a, a person who is caught committing an offence. Now, the, he wants the police to uh, in, uh, write the case diary so that he is and the offence is somebody else is charged with that offence. He pays a bribe to the police officer. Is that a compulsory bribe? A, a person he has to pay his tax. He is liable to pay a crore of tax. 
he goes to the income tax officer and he says, look here, you take 5 lakhs from me and assess me only to 10 lakhs of tax. Yes. Is that some, something compulsory, Brian? Absolutely. I mean, you can no, no, multiply no. instances like this and the honorable, mem honorable member of parliament is saying that there is no such thing as a okay, voluntary now bribe. Let, now let, okay. That's why I'm amazed. I mean, you're wanting to make a law. Okay. Ultimately, you will be responsible in deciding what the law should be. And you are saying there is no such thing as a voluntary bribe. Okay, now that so point that has been made. Understanding, I'm only on trying to point please, out that. Please move to yeah, the next point, Mr. Mr. Point out. And Mr. these are instances. I, am, I participate in a tender. I participate in a tender. I have given this instance earlier also. I am the fourth lowest. I want to non-suit the first two, three. Mr. Mr. I said, all right, I give you a bribe. You your reject point, on some technical ground. Your and point is, Mr. Mr. Vikas Singh, your point is well taken. Let us move on. Let us move on to the point which I was asking. Legal immunity to the, to the bribe to the bribe giver. Is it something which is practical? Legal is it possible? Immunity whistleblower is completely different to uh, whistleblower is completely different to what we are talking in this discussion. Whistleblower yes. is basically more in the nature of you know public interest. As somebody who you know has come across <laughs> some wrongdoing going on <clears throat> and he wants to report it, so some protection is given to him. That's the whistleblowers act. Right. But what we are talking today in this discussion is. That a person, you know, who in his own normal day to day routine comes up with a situation where his work is not being done, some routine work is not being done. And for that routine work, I, the choice is either he pays up and gets it done or he makes a report. Now, if he makes a report either before paying or, or after paying, after paying, then he is also as much guilty as, as, as you know, if the lawyer, as, as they are proposing to bring in, will make him as guilty as the person who takes Okay. It. So the point is that you must have a, a, in place a system where a person who is forced to give a bribe can have some time frame within which he can go and say that, look here, I was forced to do this. My work is now done, but I want to bring this out. I have not okay. done anything wrong done. No, but what that. was done was a legal work. There was no, there was nothing wrong in that work. But and accordingly, I should be given protection okay. for having paid that bribe. But that protection is necessary. Okay, Ven Venkatesh Nayak, yeah. that what Vikas Singh is talking about is not provided. In fact, the committee say, committee report very clearly uh, makes a distinction between yes. persons who, who, who report before pay paying the bribes and pe persons who report after paying the bribes. Yes. So how do we deal with this? One, second thing is about, you were talking about, uh, the other most important thing is what the committee recommends is about corporates the employers, the corporates, Absolutely. you know, taking responsibility for what their employees do. I think this is something, this is something which nobody should have a problem about. Yeah, yeah. But let, before coming to the issue of corporates, let me point out a serious problem here. When you make the bribe giver also culpable for uh, that act and you try that person, prosecute that person, put him in jail, then you need to see what is the standing in the eyes of the law that the bribe giver and the bribe taker has. The bribe giver can be prosecuted straight away. The bribe taker, if he or she is a yes, government, government officer, servant. then no, I'll, I'll explain it. Yes. Then we don't have sanction for prosecution is required. Yes. So which means that three months is there for giving it, and extra one month for consultation with the attorney general. If that thing doesn't happen, the bribe giver will be happily prosecuted and put behind bars, right. whereas Absolutely. the bribe taker is out. Absolutely. So regarding corporate I, governance, I, uh, very on quickly, corporate very governance, quickly. Is, on corporate governance, the issue is simply this: it is only about corporates giving bribes to the public servant, whereas the UK Bribery Act talks about intra-private sector corruption, corruption, and that has not been. We have not. That's not been. That has not been. Mr. Nayak, very quick last words to you. So you, I mean, from this discussion yeah. itself, we have. We have I only. Come, I no, but we come to realize that there are still a lot of loopholes. All the panelists. Yes. I only request to all the panelists to cooperate with the authorities, to cooperate with the government to see that this amendment get passed through. This, let us consider this as a beginning and that this compulsion aspect will be minimized as days pass, as okay. months pass. Okay, I think on that note we need to end. We will see. Well, I'm sure there'll be a, whenever this bill comes up before the how before the two houses that we don't know whether it will come up in this session. Looking at the way the parliament has been functioning or rather not functioning in the last four days, we will wait and see if it can come. And I'm sure there'll be a lot more discussion within the parliament on this and certain points which have been raised by my uh, panelists here ne also needs to be taken into account. Thanks to all my guests, Mr. Vikas Singh, Mr. Shantaram Nayak, Venkatesh Nayak and unfortunately uh, Tarun Vijay left us in, in, in between. We hope that you know he won't take it personally what has, has been said. 
but thanks to all my guests and please keep watching we'll come back with another issue on the big picture same time on monday meanwhile have a great weekend